Severe Epidemic Enterovirus Respiratory Syndrome, or SEERS for short, is a fictional respiratory disease which, for the purposes of this video, is caused by a newly identified enterovirus strain. In this video, we will explore the potential impact and challenges that such a disease could pose on global public health. Drawing from the knowledge of existing enteroviruses and respiratory illnesses, we will discuss the hypothetical epidemiology, clinical manifestations, and treatment strategies that might be associated with these serious disease. So, if you're ready, let's get into it. As previously mentioned, Sears is a hypothetical disease as there is no known condition with this specific name. However, it appears to be a combination of terms related to respiratory infections and enteroviruses. Enteroviruses are a group of RNA viruses that include polioviruses, Coxsackie viruses, echoviruses, and others. They can cause a variety of illnesses, such as hand, foot, and mouth disease, meningitis, and encephalitis. Some enteroviruses can also cause respiratory infections, but these are typically not as severe as other respiratory illnesses, such as severe acute respiratory syndrome, aka SARS, or Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, also known as MERS. Both SARS and MERS are caused by coronaviruses and can lead to severe respiratory infections, causing symptoms such as fever, cough, and shortness of breath. SARS emerged in 2002 to 2003, while MERS was first reported in 2012. Both have been associated with high mortality rates and global public health concerns. So now let's talk about the epidemiology. In our hypothetical scenario, Sears emerges in a densely populated urban area, rapidly spreading through respiratory droplets and close person-to-person -person contact. The virus would likely demonstrate a high reproduction number, indicating its ability to spread quickly and efficiently among acceptable populations. As the outbreak escalates, healthcare systems will become strained, with hospitals and clinics overwhelmed by the surge of patients seeking treatment for severe respiratory symptoms. Next up is the clinical manifestations. Sears would present a range of clinical symptoms ranging from mild flu-like symptoms to severe respiratory distress. In mild cases, individuals may experience fever, cough, sore throat, and fatigue. However, as the disease progresses, more severe cases would exhibit symptoms such as difficulty breathing, chest pain, and even acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS. The virus's affinity for the respiratory system could potentially lead to an increased risk of pneumonia, particularly in vulnerable populations such as the elderly, immunocompromised individuals, and those with pre-existing respiratory conditions. And that leads to the treatment and prevention strategies. Given the novelty of this hypothetical enterovirus, treatment options for Sears would initially be limited. Supportive care such as oxygen therapy and mechanical ventilation might be required for severe cases. As researchers work to develop targeted antiviral therapies and vaccinations, public health measures would play a crucial role in mitigating the spread of the virus. Strategies such as social distancing, mask wearing, frequent hand washing, and widespread testing would be implemented to slow transmission rates and protect vulnerable populations. In the face of a global threat like Sears, international cooperation and information sharing would be crucial to mounting an effective response. Organizations such as the World Health Organization and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention would play a key role in coordinating efforts, providing guidance on the best practices, and supporting research initiatives. Furthermore, countries would need to invest in their public health infrastructure and surveillance systems to detect and respond to emerging infectious diseases promptly. And you may be wondering, what exactly is the difference between an enterovirus and a coronavirus? Well, allow me to briefly explain. Enteroviruses and coronaviruses are two distinct families of viruses that can cause illness in humans. Although both can lead to respiratory infections, 
they have differences in terms of their genetic makeup, structure, and the range of diseases that they cause. Here is a comparison of the two. First, we must discuss the genetic makeup. Enteroviruses are a group of single-stranded RNA viruses belonging to the P. Coronaviridae family. They include polioviruses, Coxsackie viruses, echoviruses, and other enteroviruses. Coronaviruses are also single-stranded RNA viruses, but belong to the Coronaviridae family. There are seven known human coronaviruses, including the ones responsible for the common cold, SARS, MERS, and the recent pandemic-causing virus, aka COVID-19. Next is the structure. Enteroviruses are small, non-enveloped viruses with a protein shell that surrounds their genetic material. Coronaviruses are larger, enveloped viruses with a distinctive crown-like appearance due to the spike proteins on their surface. These spike proteins play a crucial role in the virus's ability to enter host cells. Next is the transmission and symptoms. Both enteroviruses and coronaviruses can be transmitted through respiratory droplets, close person-to-person -person contact, and contaminated surfaces. However, enteroviruses can also be transmitted through the fecal-oral route, which is not a common transmission route for coronaviruses. Enteroviruses can cause a wide range of illnesses, including hand, foot, and mouth disease, meningitis, encephalitis, and myocarditis. Respiratory infections caused by enteroviruses are typically mild, such as the common cold. Coronaviruses are primarily associated with respiratory illnesses. While some strains cause mild cold-like symptoms, others can lead to severe respiratory infections with high mortality rates. And now we must discuss the treatment and prevention. There are no specific antiviral treatments for enterovirus or coronavirus infections, although research is ongoing, especially for COVID-19. Supportive care is provided to manage symptoms and complications. Vaccines are available for some enteroviruses, such as the polio virus. For coronaviruses, vaccines have been developed as the world experienced a global pandemic. While both enteroviruses and coronaviruses are single-stranded RNA viruses that can cause respiratory infections, they belong to different families and have notable differences in their genetic makeup, structure, and associated diseases. And you may also be wondering what is the difference between SEERS and COVID-19. As I said before, while SEERS is a fictional disease, it may be helpful to compare enteroviruses with the well-known COVID-19 virus. COVID-19 is caused by the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which is a coronavirus, not an enterovirus. COVID-19 has a wide range of symptoms, including fever, cough, shortness of breath, fatigue, and a loss of taste or smell. In severe cases, it can lead to pneumonia, acute respiratory distress syndrome, organ failure, and death. The transmission of COVID-19 is primarily through respiratory droplets from infected individuals, which is similar to how enteroviruses spread. Again, and I must emphasize, the Sears virus is not a genuine threat because it is not a real disease. Or is it? Conspiracy theorists have speculated that the disease will appear in the year 2025 due to a series of video simulations that were released by the World Health Organization. This was referred to as the catastrophic contagion, where they discussed how to best respond to an event such as a Sears outbreak. Either way, understanding the actual enteroviruses and comparing them with other respiratory viruses like COVID-19 can provide valuable insights into the challenges public health officials face in managing and preventing respiratory illnesses. But to give a quick recap, while Sears is a fictional disease, examining its potential implications serves as a valuable exercise in understanding the challenges and complexities of managing emerging infectious diseases, which explains the exercise and simulation involving Bill Gates and the World Health Organization. By learning from past experiences and investing in proactive measures, we can better prepare for and respond to future threats. 
ensuring the health and safety of our global community. If you want to support the channel, please like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. And there should be some other helpful videos popping up on your screen right about now that I think you will enjoy. And just a quick reminder, we are not doctors. This video is for informational purposes only. Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed day. And as always, breathe easy, my friend.